I've got a Saturday haul to share with you guys today, and I'll start off with an order that I placed on Mac.com. They were having like a 20, I think it was 20% off sale for like obsessed members, I think is, I think that's what level I am. <laughs> so I went ahead and took that opportunity to buy some things from their summer collection, which I was really surprised when I first saw the pictures for the collection at how small it was. Usually Mac does a really large like summer collection this year it was kind of small <laughs> purchased kind of their standout piece which is the mother of pearl pearl matte face powder and the packaging this has got that oil slick type of feel like from green to uh, purple blue shift to it which is really pretty but it's a little bit more on the plain side but I do like it and then the writing on there is kind of accented in a bronze type of shade but this guy here is actually what I have on my cheeks for blush today I wasn't quite sure how it would kind of turn out based off the shades inside but I do feel like that purple and um, pink colors pull a nice blush color with the bronze through the center because it's kind of a rosy bronze so again that's the blush that I have on my cheeks today and I'm just gonna swirl these uh, shades all together to give you guys a swatch so it's like a bronzy, dusty pink color, which I think is quite pretty. And that's what I'll be using it for would be a blush. It does have a sheen to it. I also purchased one of the bronzers, and this is the Extra Dimension Bronzing Powder in Golden Rinse. I don't have this one from any previous collection, so I thought I would pick it up based off the description. It was a uh, kind of a more cool tone type bronze, and I do love the Extra Dimension formula from MAC. And this is the bronzer that I have on my face today, and it does pull this really pretty peachy sun-kissed uh, bronze color which I really like. It does have a sheen to it as well but I've been wearing it uh, quite a bit as you can see <laughs> right there. Um, I've been wearing it kind of all week since I've gotten it. So this is the uh, Extra Dimension Bronzer in Golden Rinse right here. Same type of packaging on this guy. And the bronze shade, um, I wasn't quite sure what to expect but I really like the color. It's very flattering. And then I purchased one of the lipsticks and the shade that I got is called Nothing to Wear, which is a cream sheen formula, which is one of my favorite formulas from MAC. Uh, same type of packaging on this guy. And this just looks like a really pretty dusty wearable nude shade. Right there. Kind of, I should put it over the top of this. I'm gonna. I have like a ColourPop lipstick on right now, but... I just love Max Cream Sheen Formula. This color is really pretty too. And then I also threw in my order this mineralized blush in Hey Coral Hay. They recently released a couple new shades of their mineralized blushes. Um, there's a few other shades that I want to get, but I just went with this one for now. So it's a pretty coral. Um, it's, it's got a matte finish to it. it. For me, it kind of looks like a satin on the skin. But um, I've been loving corals, especially for the summertime, which is no coincidence. <laughs> but very pigmented. I, I've been using the Wayne Goss airbrush with it and you just need to tap your brush in there a little bit to get some color on the cheeks. It's very pigmented. Then I got my order from Sephora with the other Kat Von D number 75 uh, eyebrow brush. I bought another one. <laughs> the one, the first one that I bought I really really like. Um, I mentioned it in my last uh, video which was a favorite. Um, and it's in the dirty pile and I really need to wash brushes so <laughs> this came in handy when I got it yesterday <laughs> so this is the 75 it's the one with the notches I really been enjoying this to put on eyebrow powder and then I did go ahead and purchase that full size of the Grand Mascara it's from Grand Lash MD um, I have been noticing that I really like the formula of the mascara itself too it separates lashes really well lengthens and it gives them a nice amount of volume they almost look like kind of feathery um, two coats is, well, is about what I I use but um, I do feel like my eyelashes are getting ever so slightly longer this has got a conditioning formula to it so I do think it's working that's why I bought the full size because I originally started with a little sample um, and I really like the formula of the mascara and I do feel like it's doing something for my lashes so I might have a new favorite mascara on my hands. <laughs> it doesn't flake or smudge on me either, and it's been really, really wet and humid here. The packaging kind of comes in a, a light aluminum feeling uh, type packaging, and then it, ha it does have a natural, more natural bristle brush to it too, which typically I like the rubber bristle brushes, um, but I really like this one. It's not too big. It gets in the corners really well. It just does a really good job. 
I'd been looking at the NARS Afterglow Lip Balm like every time that I would go on the Sephora website. I'd just look at it and think the packaging looks so pretty. And then I was watching Jamie Genevieve and she had gone to some NARS events and stuff and she's like one of my favorite YouTubers. <laughs> I could watch like her videos over and over but um, she kind of sold me on it. It just looks so pretty on her lips so I went ahead and purchased it. It's the, again, Afterglow Lip Balm in the shade Orgasm. It's got a really pretty rose gold packaging. It has a lip balm type feel and it feels really nourishing on the lips. Um, one thing that I didn't expect from it is um, it does stain the lips kind of like uh, the uh, Dior lip glows do. It gives a tint to the lips. This one pulls kind of a pink on my lips. So it originally goes on like that. And then as it wears off through the day, if I don't like re reapply it and stuff, I noticed how much tint it gave my actual lip color, which was quite a bit. Now that I kind of think about it, it does feel similar to the Dior lip glows as well. It's a little bit thinner formula. I feel like the lip glows might have a little bit more moisturization to them than this one does, but you can kind of see that it's, it's slowly turning a little bit more pink. I'll kind of leave it on there and see if it turns my skin. And then I got the prettiest PR package from Drunk Elephant. They came out with a new product that I didn't even hear about until like I opened up the package and I was like, oh, new Drunk Elephant, sign me up. Because <laughs> I do really like uh, quite a few products from the brand Drunk Elephant. I use their uh, C Tango eye cream and I like the uh, Pro Proteiny Polypeptide cream. And then a while back, I did go through an entire tube of their Umbra Sheer Physical Defense Sunscreen. And I hadn't repurchased it because I, I was looking for a little bit higher SPF and something that um, had a little bit more moisture to my skin. They had since reformulated the sunscreen from what I've heard. And they included a full size of the Umbra Sunscreen and then their new product, which is the Debronzy Anti-Pollution Sun Sunshine Serum. <laughs> Sunshine Serum. <laughs> and then they also put in a Virgin Marula Luxury Face Oil. Um, I have got one of these in use right now. I'm actually almost at the tail end of the bottle, so it was nice that I have another one to use. Um, this is a product that I've probably been through three bottles of the Marula Oil. But since I'd gotten this PR package, it really kind of intrigued me, and I wanted to try the tinted version of the sunscreen. So I did go ahead and purchase the uh, Umbra a tint physical daily defense in the SPF 30 uh, as well and the reason why I'm kind of onto the back onto this drunk elephant sunscreen in the first place is um, Josie Marin I loved the SPF 47 tinted moisturizer and also the regular version and I had noticed that it was out of stock on Sephora for quite a while and then all of a sudden it came in stock and I bought like a great big six ounce bottle because it came in a larger size and my face broke out so bad and nothing that I was doing was making it any better but I was continually using the Josie Marin and I, I had compared it to an older bottle that I had because I do have a box of empties and the formula is different on the newer version. So I was like, I wonder if that's what it is. So in the interim, I stopped using the Josie Marin and I started using the Drunk Elephant sunscreen and I don't have any new breakouts on my face since I started using this one instead of the Josie Marin, which I'm, I'm a little uh, about. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that just yet because <laughs> I've been using the Josie Marin for so long. But what I had found out with the Drunk Elephant sunscreen is I'd used this once this week by itself without mixing in the uh, Debronzy anti-pollution, the new serum, <laughs> without mixing this in and I noticed that my face felt a little bit more dry that day. Since then I've been combining the two together um, and I feel like it's just enough hydration for my face, especially in the summer months. It feels really nice. Uh, moving into winter, I don't know how that'll work out. I might have to mix some oils in with it. But the two products together feel really, really nice on the skin. Today, I'm using the tinted version uh, mixed with a one pump of the DeBronzy. Um, that's what I have on my face today. The DeBronzy Anti-Pollution Sunshine Serum. <laughs> um, it says like a, a shot of sunshine without the damaging effects. Um, Add a pump of DeBronzy to any Drunk Elephant Serum Oil or Moisturizer for a gorgeous glow and a potent dose of protective antioxidants and omega fatty acids. So I've mixed it with the original version quite a few times and then now I'm also mixing it with the tinted version, which is what's on my face today because I like a little bit more color. And it does give my face a glow, but it's not a whole ton. It's not like you're going to get any coverage from either of these. Um, where when I used the Josie Marin, that, that product, uh, the tinted version, did give me a tiny bit of coverage on my face. Uh, this one does not and this doesn't tan my face either um, I wasn't sure if it was going to do that or not but I exfoliate too much for it to even kind of withhold any type of self tanner on my face anyway that's kind of a big step for me because uh, like I said I've been using the Josie Marin um, SPF 47 
uh, for such a long time years I've used that product so it's kind of a like again it's kind of a big deal I I, I don't know what they did to it I, I'm blaming I'm definitely blaming it for the massive breakouts around around my face because when I stopped using it they're going away and I haven't had any new breakouts since then so I do wish that Drunk Elephant would come out with a higher SPF though because I like a higher SPF for how much I'm outside in the summertime so anyway the debronzy comes with a pump and I just put one pump of this debronzy mix it in with the sunscreen um, both the tinted version and the clear version I like both of them um, I just purchased the tinted one and have been using it for the past two days as opposed to this one right here and I don't really notice a ton of change in the consistency of the product um, just that the tinted one has a tint. <laughs> so a big thank you to Drunk Elephant for sending these products over. I'd still probably be using my Josie Marin if these hadn't come when they had and I'd probably still be struggling trying to clear up the breakouts. <laughs> they were just coming and they weren't stopping and I was like but why? <laughs> like nothing major had changed in my skincare or anything like that. I do go lighter on the moisturizer and stuff like the serums and stuff like that in the summertime but nothing major and then I compared the two bottles and I was like they changed the formula what <laughs> So there's my skincare chronicle of the day. Anyway, moving on, I was in Ulta and they had had some limited edition wet and wild displays out. They had like the um, bird, the uh, there was a hummingbird collection that just came out and then they also had the, um, I don't know the name of this one either, the one with the little skulls on it. So I purchased two products from there. Uh, I got the wet and wild mega liner and this is in the shade uh, winged and wild and it's a deep matte like forest green shade. And this doesn't have really long wearing power, power these ones from Wet n Wild, they wash off quite easily, but I do like the formula and the consistency and the color of this eyeliner. Well, oh, you can see the NARS is really building up. So that is called Winged and Wild, and it's a really deep forest green. I was wearing it in, I filmed a video on the new Melt Cosmetics Gemini palette, and I paired that palette with this green eyeliner and it turned out really pretty which speaking of which I did do a video on that and I have not had a chance to edit edit it yet so I'm hoping to get that up soon I wanted to get it up like on Wednesday or Thursday of this past week and it just didn't happen so hopefully I can get that up soon for you guys um the other one that I got is the goth tears liquid catsuit eyeshadow this was sold out when I went and ordered um the other products that I got from Wet n Wild uh, so I was happy to see it in store. I was expecting it to be a little bit more glittery, but it's still a pretty color nonetheless. It's that purple shift to blue that I just love. And I'll probably top this to make it even shinier over shadows with that same similar effect. So that one is Goth Tears from Wet n Wild. Let me go ahead and wet, wipe this off so you guys can see that it's, if it stains. Yeah, there's a bit of a pink stain on there from that NARS orgasm balm. And then I had seen this palette online and I thought, ooh, that looks pretty, but I like had no intention of purchasing it until I went into Ulta and seen the display and I was like, that's really pretty. <laughs> so I went ahead and purchased it. It's the Aspen Ovard and Tarte palette. I, I don't know too much about um, Aspen Ovard. I believe she is like a, a influencer, an online media type gal. But um, the palette itself. <laughs> is very very pretty it's got rose reflective rose gold with flowers on there and then inside you've got nine eyeshadows a highlighter and a blush and when I had seen the pictures online I just kind of thought that looked kind of bland but then I seen it in person I was like you know what that looks like a super easy super wearable pretty um, palette to wear and it is that's kind of exactly what it is the highlighter kind of is meshes in with my skin tone it doesn't give a lot of like lift in terms of lightness but it does add a pretty sheen to the cheeks and then this is a really neutral dusty rose blush and it's a matte the eyeshadows in here you've got four shimmers and then you've got five mattes which you've got matte brow bone transition and then a deep shade for the crease that that's deep enough for my skin tone I can imagine that on a really deep skin tone that might not be enough for the crease area however and this does smell like cocoa or vanilla something sweet it smells sweet so these are the shades so let me give you some swatches I'm happy I'm totally happy with this purchase I didn't you know have any intention of buying it and then when I went to use it I really enjoyed it and I think it's quite pretty as well so those are the face products and then we'll do these eyeshadows here so this is a shimmer a matte a shimmer I suppose this one's more like kind of a satin that one and these next three this is a matte 
a shimmer. That's pretty loosely packed, that one. This is a matte. And this guy. That one. And then the bottom row. This is a matte, a matte, and then a shimmer. So that is the Tarte in Aspen Ovard Eye and Cheek Palette. I also bought another uh, MAC and Nicki Minaj lipstick in Nicki's Nude. <laughs> um, so I have got three of them now, but it's one of my favorite just go-to lipsticks and it was in like the goodbye section of MAC, so I got it on sale. And then I was in Walmart and I seen a display for some new CoverGirl palettes and this one here just looked really pretty and fun and they were like $9.99 and it had this sleeve on there, the True Naked Peach Punch. It had a little peach sleeve on it, and then it's got a peach eyeshadow palette. And this does have a candied peach smell to it, so that's kind of fun. Inside of here, there's eight eyeshadows. You've got one, two, three mattes. This one is more like a satin-type shade. Everything else is quite shimmery. Um, this formula is thinner. I was able to get a pretty look out of it, but I did have to build up the shades. And I had to be careful not to blend too much, otherwise they'd kind of blend away a little bit. Um, other than that, the look that I did did come out pretty. It's just a little bit more to work with. So let's give you some swatches. I just think it's kind of fun that the drugstore is doing some fun stuff like this. Again, this is from uh, CoverGirl. This shimmery shade is really gorgeous. I do find that the shimmer shades in these palettes work a little bit better than the matte shades do. And I do have to use a, a, a pretty tacky type base on my eyes. These last two. This is a pretty color too. They're so soft though. They're almost too soft. I seen that Ilia came out with a new uh, loose powder and it's the Radiant Translucent Powder SPF 20 and I got the shade Magic Sands which is the lighter of the two shades that they have available. Um, the only downfall is kind of expensive. I think I paid 30 some dollars for it and there's only 0.24 ounces of product in here. I'm hoping that it'll last long. Um, it does have an expiration date on the bottom of uh, 420 but uh, this is a, a kind of a natural type brand and I purchased it off of Sephora. So so here is the packaging. Uh, it's kind of like a, a bone type color. I have used it to set the Bare Minerals Bare Pro foundation and I really like the finish of the powder. Um, I've used it twice so far, both times really enjoyed it, but I did have to kind of use a little bit more product than I wanted to considering there's only 0.24 ounces in the jar. So if I continually use it how I plan to, <laughs> I'm probably going to go through it quite fast. But other than that, it's a really, really pretty powder. Um, again, SPF 20. I'm big on the SPF in the summertime. I'm big on SPF year-round. I wear it every day, but in the summer I like to layer physical SPFs on my face. So, And this one is a physical SPF. It's a non-nano zinc oxide in, with 19% in there. And then I bit the bullet and I bought the Lunar Beauty Life's a Drag eyeshadow palette. I was contemplating going back and forth between this palette and the Gemini palette to do like a video on. And I, so I, I posted a picture on Instagram and everybody wanted to see the Gemini palette, which by the way, I'm, I'm hoping to edit that and get it up this week. <laughs> It's filmed, I just need to edit it. Um, anyway, I thought that I would really like this eyeshadow palette. I know the layout of the colors looks kind of, kind of crazy, but I'm somebody who likes to have a pop of color on the lid followed by like neutral mattes through the crease, so I thought this would work really nicely for me. Granted, I only used it one time so far, um, but I really... I didn't like working with the matte shades so much so that I've only used it once and I haven't used it again. Um, they're very, very, very thin. The the shadows don't have a lot of substance to them, so I found myself constantly going back into the, the matte shades, picking up the product, and then putting it on, blending, putting it on, blending. And then contrary to what I originally thought, um, these colors here, they don't work out the best with these colors over here. Like like I said, I normally like a pop of color on the lid. I was using like this yellow and I think I used this, oh this shade Snatched, which I thought was like a red burgundy, showed up very very pinky purple. It goes pink on my skin, which I was like dang it, I was hoping for that rich like wine 
red color from the shade and it, it pulls pink. The base is more pink. So I did purchase it. I've only used it once. I'm not too excited about using it again. I will, however, and if my thoughts change on the shades or something miraculous happens in the interim, I'll definitely let you guys know. But for right now, I'm not, I'm not crazy about it. Um, the two shimmer shades in the center, though, those are really, really pretty colors these two right here. It does come with a double-ended synthetic brush, which I'm not nuts about either. It does say Lunar Beauty on it, but uh, these are the colors, and I'm going to give you guys some swatches. So let's just go straight across like that. So this is a matte, a matte, a matte, and then a shimmer. They're so thin. These, these shadows are just really, really thin. See, that shimmer shade is gorgeous. And then these next ones right here, matte, matte, matte. And then the black here is a matte. And then another matte, matte. Shimmer, matte, and then these last two. This one's a matte. This one I originally thought was a matte, but it's more like a satin. It does have a bit of a sheen to it. And blend it out, this one here pulls quite pink on my skin. So there are some swatches. I definitely need to play with it more, and normally I do like a funky color selection in palettes, but the first time I used it, I was just like, oh gosh. <laughs> I really wanted to wash it off, and it cre I had to do a lot of building and blending to get um, the colors to on, because they were just blending like off my eyes. I mean, based off the swatches that I just did, you could see that they have pigmentation to them, but the formula is really, really thin. Um, I'm going to try it again. Again, if my opinion kind of changes and I happen to fall in love with it or anything like that, I'll definitely let you guys know. Um, no matte brow bone highlight in here for me either. <laughs> so what I did was I just mixed those two colors together and they did mix together well for underneath the brow bone highlight, um, but I had to pack it on quite a bit. And then next up, I did purchase the two other uh, Viseart eyeshadow palettes in the Warm new or warm Mattes and the Neutral Matte palette, um, which I do have in the uh, older packaging, but I wanted it in this packaging so that I could remove them and put them with a bunch of my Theory palettes and other like magnetized uh, Viseart eyeshadows that I have. Um, I just like, I like the idea of being able to just move them and remove them and create a... Uh, uh, layout and stuff with my Viseart matte eyeshadow because again they are some of my favorite matte eyeshadows so this is an empty palette of the neutral mattes right here and the magnet in here is really really strong like I had a hard time having my magnet pull out the eyeshadow from this magnet <laughs> so um, but this is a really pretty packaging I like this packaging quite a bit better than the other and then this is where I put them this is a Adept Cosmetics uh, magnetic eyeshadow palette and then I put them in here <sighs> I put them in here with all my Theory palettes. Um, and then also the other, the, the Cool Mattes 2 palette is right here. So you've got the Warm Mattes right there, the war, or the Neutral Mattes right there. I've got a Theory palette, a Theory palette, the Cool Mattes 2, Theory palette, Theory palette, Theory palette, Theory, Theory. <laughs> but isn't that just like visually, visually pleasing? I was so happy that I was able to fit them all in here. I do have a little uh, empty section right there. But um, again, Viseart mattes are some of my favorite. And I've said it a few times, but I'll go ahead and say it again. The mattes don't swatch that great when you're like swatching with your fingers. Um, the magic for me really happens when I use them on the eye. They're just some of the best matte eyeshadows. I can... I can count on these eyeshadows for every day, all day, whenever. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I did with them. I just think it looks so pretty. And then lastly, I bit the bullet and I bought a bunch of Melt products. I bought three stacks. I bought the Radioactive stack. I bought the Rust stack. 
came in this box. And then I bought the, what's this one called? The Baby Girl Stack. So I bought three stacks and I bought the Pro Palette and it, these stacks weren't enough to fill the Pro Palette so I bought two um, individual shadows as well. And I'm totally late to the bandwagon on this but the shadows do come in the stack. These are the lids that I have because I put them in the Pro Palette already. Now the Pro Palette is pretty but it's huge. It's a really, really big magnetic palette. And I do, I like the idea and the concept behind it, but I don't feel like it's really practical. Like I would have loved to have these stacks have the, the pan, like the metal pan, come all the way out of the packaging instead of like them to create a magnetic palette around the whole packaging, if that makes any sense. Um, one of the things that would have made me like this a little bit more is if it was hinged on the edges, because when I open it up, it comes in two pieces like this. Here's a piece of foam in there. And it's not hinged, so it doesn't stay together. So when I'm using these eyeshadows, I want to use shades from both. Um, I don't want to constantly have to switch them around and stuff. I'd like them to just be all together. And my hand, while I do have a relatively large hands, <laughs> they're not, like, I can't hold both palettes and do, like, my brush at the same time. I have to set one down, use it, set the other, pick the other one up type of thing, which I, I don't, I don't like that method. <laughs> I just wish they would have hinged the palette together so that you could, like, hold on to the whole thing. But let me give you guys some swatches of the shadows that I got. Um, these things are huge. There's 0.1 ounces of shadow per pan, which is more along the lines of like a, a blush shade than it is an eyeshadow. And I've been playing with these eyeshadows and I bought them because I really do like the uh, Gemini palette. Um, these are wicked. Like the, these are really substantial eyeshadows. They have a lot of like, um, thickness to them. <laughs> they build really well. They're pigmented. They blend. I will say you don't want to swirl your brush in there because it does give kick up and you, you don't really need um, that much product. But uh, let me swatch them. So this shade is Radon right here. Followed by Neon which is a, a neon yellow. I can see some sparkles in there but the sparkles are in a matte base. Next one is called Xenon. This one again has got a sh kind of a shimmer to it. And then this one is Radioactive, which is a super bright hot pink. So you can just see that they are kind of crumbling on my swatches there. As long as I tapped my brush off though when I used these and didn't like overdo it swirling in there, I didn't get a lot of fallout considering how kind of um, much, cr how kind of crumbly they kind of look. Then I've got Scammon. This is a matte color. Main Squeeze, which is a matte. Crush, which is kind of a metallic. And then Breakup, which is a matte. And then this shade is Hopeless Romantics, which comes in that love, the love something stack there. There's five shadows that came in that one right there. Then this shade is Classic, and it's a matte. Followed by Antique, which is also a matte. I believe these are the two singles that I purchased to fill up the eyeshadow palette. This shade is called Rot and it's a matte. What a lovely name for an eyeshadow. <laughs> Rot. This one is Rust and it's also a matte. This one is called Rubbish. It's also a matte. A little like a mustard color. This one is called Amelie, and it is a shimmer. And then this last one is called Lovesick, and it is kind of a deep burgundy color. Right there. 
So those are all the shades I purchased from Melt. And so far I have really been enjoying the shadows. These sw I haven't swatched them all on my arm like this, so I hadn't realized kind of how just crumbly they are. I mostly use them with a brush. Um, and again, you don't want to like swirl your brush in there because it'll, it'll pick up quite a bit of product and kind of scatter it a little bit. Um, like some of the shades I almost feel could be pressed a little bit harder inside the pan. But otherwise I find that they work really well on the eye. And I do like the concept behind the whole stacks and the palette and everything, but um, it's not really uh, practical, I guess. I would have loved it if they would have made the metal pans magnetic inside of that. It's housed like outer packaging, but I also purchased one of their bullet lipsticks, not the liquid ones, because I just don't wear liquid lipsticks that much. And this color just looked so perfect. It's called Summer. Um, it's a matte lipstick, and I, I went to put it on for the first time yesterday, and it was so... It was so dry and patchy looking on my lips. I was like, oh no, <laughs> the color's gorgeous. So I kind of dabbed it on and then I took another lipstick and went over it and kind of mixed them. I think I used ColourPop's Carousel and mixed it because I really love the color of this. Um, but the formula, I, I'm not feeling the formula at all. See, like it's barely, it's dry, dry, dry. And it on my lips, it just looked, it looked like I needed a lip mask. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the shade is gorgeous. I'm just not a fan of that uh, the formula of this lipstick at all. I also purchased one of their blush lights, and this is in the shade Electra. And there's 0.16 ounces in here. It just looked like a really pretty lavender. I haven't worn it yet. It's showing up a little bit more purple in the viewfinder than in real life, but it is a baby pink lavender type. Um, I'll use it as a blush, I'm sure, but very soft formula. It's not shiny enough for me to be a highlighter, so I'm going to I'm going to use it as a blush. It's a very unique shade though. And then lastly, I did purchase one of their highlighters. It's the Digital Dust Highlights in Stargazer. Uh, point 0.28 ounces of product in here. Pretty packaging. Uh, this is an uh, like that gelée type formula. I really, really like this highlighter. I have it on the top of my cheeks today. I do wish that they came out with one more lighter version, like a, um, a silvery white shade, but this is the lightest color that they have. Um, it's light enough for my skin tone, but it doesn't, it doesn't provide a ton of like light coloring on top of my cheeks, but it has a really beautiful sheen to it. So I'm super happy that I got it because it is pretty. So that is the shade Stargazer. Again, it's that uh, baked jelly type formula in there. And that's everything for my haul. I feel like I've been talking forever, man. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to get that Melt Gemini eyeshadow palette video up this week too. So hopefully you guys still want to see it. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen and I'll see you guys later. Bye.